and the historic one. Cardinal Jorge Mario Bergoglio, now Pope Francis, is the first Jesuit pontiff and the first pope from Latin America where 40% of the world's Catholics live. It was a great recognition by the church that it's not Eurocentric anymore. The announcement came at the end of a long rainy day. Thousands of people huddled under umbrellas in St. Peter's Square, looking up at the chimney on the roof of the Sistine Chapel. The morning brought black smoke. The tension of the afternoon broken by seagulls, who took turns sitting on the chimney long enough to trend on Twitter. Then just after 7 o'clock here, the sight the world waited for. Igniting an hour-long celebration. But when his name was announced, Sancte Romani Ecclesi Cardinalem Bergoglio, there was an audible gasp in the square, a sense of confusion. Bergoglio was not one of the cardinals that had captured Rome's attention. Stepping out on the balcony, per lui, perché il Signore lo benedica, the humble Argentine led the people in prayer. Questa preghiera de voi su di me that asked the crowd of more than 100,000 to silently pray for him. Jesus Christus ad vitam eternam. Pope Francis is the choice of cardinals said to be divided into two factions, the reformers who want to clean up the Vatican's dysfunctional bureaucracy and focus on bringing new energy to this global institution, and the old guard who want to maintain the status quo. I think he does belong in the reformer category. I think he picks up the mantle in many ways of John Paul II. I think he is someone of the new evangelization. An enthusiastic welcome for a new leader, now charged with steering the church through a crucial moment in history. Now we understand from New York's Cardinal Timothy Dolan that Pope Francis tomorrow will go to Castle Gandolfo to visit Benedict, Pope Emeritus. And then next Tuesday, Pope Francis will celebrate his first Mass here at St. Peter's. Tuesday is the Feast of St. Joseph, and St. Joseph is the patron saint of the Universal Church. Brian? And you said two striking things during our live coverage earlier today, and that was uh, how silent it got when he asked for silence, and what it was like as he read the prayer, as he led the group in prayer, and everyone in the square followed along. It was. The prayers he said, and he said them in Italian, were the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be. And you had more than 100,000 people all joining in in those three prayers. And then the Pope asked for a silent prayer for himself. And suddenly, all these people went quiet. The only thing I could hear around me, Brian, were the camera shutters going off. But everybody, it was an incredibly reverential moment a moment that brought all these people from many different countries together in support of this man, this 76-year-old man, who is now the 266th pontiff of the Catholic Church. Brian Anne Thompson, who had a great perspective this historic day at the Vatican, starting off our coverage, and thanks. And beyond the Vatican, perhaps nowhere is there more joy tonight than in Argentina. There was cheering for Francis in the streets of Buenos Aires. He became a priest in his early 30s, and according to his biographer, led a lifestyle that was, quote, sober and austere. Lester Holt, also at the Vatican tonight, with more on this new pope. Lester, good evening. Hello, Brian. By many accounts, a quiet man, a simple man. His biographer also said he's a little media shy. But after stepping onto the papal loggia here tonight, the world is clamoring to hear more from and more about Pope Francis. When the Cardinals filed into the Sistine Chapel on Tuesday, he was regarded as a long shot at best. At 76, Jorge Bergoglio was thought by some to be too old. But if his name was unfamiliar and caught most gathered on St. Peter's Square by surprise, there was unabashed joy in Buenos Aires tonight. Jorge Mario Bergoglio is an Argentine-born son of Italian immigrants, one of five children. He lost a lung to an infection when he was a teenager, but went on to become a priest in 1969. He joined the Jesuit order, embracing an austere lifestyle. Even as a cardinal and archbishop of Buenos Aires, he shunned the privileges and trappings that usually come with the job. He took the tram to work. He lived in a small apartment rather than in the archbishop's palace. Uh, he's not a man of a lot of fuss, pomp, and circumstances. 
In 2005, Bergoglio was a runner-up behind Joseph Ratzinger to replace the late Pope John Paul II. He is regarded as a strong defender of Catholic doctrine. Described by his biographer as a balancing force, he earned a reputation in Argentina as a fierce advocate for the poor. This is a man of God, a man of the new evangelization, uh, a man who is a great defender of democracy in a country where democracy is under real stress right now in Argentina. Tonight, choosing to become Pope Francis, he takes the name of 13th century preacher St. Francis Assisi, who lived a life of poverty. No surprise to those who know him. You can see the humility of the man. You can see the calm of the man. And I can tell you, I know the strength of the man and the compassion of the man. His election has sparked excitement in Latin America, both out of cultural pride and the recognition of the growing importance and influence of that part of the world. Bergoglio brings Latin America to Rome and to the world. His papacy is expected to reflect his sense of strong social justice, and Brian, he's, Brian, he's also expected to bring along a very strong management style. Lester Holt, part of our team at the Vatican as well. Lester, thanks for that. We want to bring back in a man we just saw, our NBC News Vatican analyst, George Weigel, a veteran journalist, papal biographer, and as you've seen, he's provided us with analysis through.